Okay, so we're now going to continue to our next topic, which is closely related to the acid-base equilibrium concept we learned in the previous chapter, and this is the application of acid-base equilibrium in making buffers and in performing acid-base titration. So the first thing is just to define what a buffer is. A buffer is a solution that helps to maintain the pH of that solution. So in other words, if you have a buffer in it, then the change in pH is not going to be very significant when we add an acid or a base to that solution. There's a lot of reasons why buffers are important. And the main thing is because many chemical reactions happen when there's an excess of proton or an excess of hydroxides present. So maintaining that hydroxide and proton concentration at a specific value, which is another way of saying maintaining pH, is critical to making sure that reaction happen the way they should. A biological example of this is what happens in the blood. Here you can see that the normal pH for blood has a very narrow range of between 7.35 to 7.45. If you have a lower pH than 7.35 all the way to 7, we call that condition acidosis. And then when you have a higher pH than 7.45 up to 7.8, we call it alkalosis. And any pH beyond those values values result in the death of the organism. So as you can see, it's a pretty small range of pH value. Now keep in mind that pH is a loft scale. So a difference of one pH unit corresponds to a difference of 10 times the concentration of proton. But you have to maintain that pH in order for all the different proteins and biomolecules in your blood to function properly. So this picture on the right is just showing you how a buffer works. And here we have on the left side, it's just a picture of an acid that's being added to pure water versus a water that has a buffer in it. So at the beginning, the pH is seven for both solutions before the acid is added. And let's say you add some HCl to both solutions. You'll find quickly that the pH of the water only solution will change dramatically lower, in this case to 3.0, just with a few drops of HCl. Whereas with the same number of drops of HCl for the buffered solution, the pH barely changes at all. And we see this the same thing with bases. If we start with those two solutions again, if we add an AOH, in this case, the pH will change dramatically upward all the way to 11 whereas the pH of the buffered solution again barely changes at all. And so in order for a buffer to work, we're gonna need an acid in the buffer. And the purpose of having the acid is to neutralize any base that you're adding. So in that picture that I just showed you, if I'm adding NaOH, in order for my pH not to change dramatically, I'm gonna need to have something in my solution that will neutralize that NaOH. Similarly, if I'm adding HCl, just like in the picture I showed here, I'm gonna need something to neutralize that HCl, so I'm gonna need a base. So in other words, my buffer solution has to have two components in it. It has to have an acid and it has to have a base, and they both serve a function to neutralize whatever it is that I'm adding. Now, there are many ways to combine an acid and a base, and not all of them result in a buffer. So we have to focus in a little bit more on exactly what kind of acids and what kind of bases will work that will actually result in us having a buffer solution at the end. What I'm going to do in the next section is to discuss various combinations of acids and bases, starting with a strong acid, strong base combination. Later on, we'll have a weak acid and its conjugate base, a weak base and its conjugate acid. Then we'll have a weak acid, strong base combination, and then we're going to cap it off with a weak base and strong acid combination. So there's five different situation where we might consider having an acid and a base in the solution. The question becomes which of those five situations will actually result in a buffer. And in order for us to be able to answer that, we're going to need to keep in mind some of the things that we learned in acid-base equilibrium. And the first one being, what does the acid look like in equilibrium? Remember that if we have a strong acid, they dissociate completely because they have a large K value. If we have a weak acid, they dissociate partially. So most of the species stays as the molecular form of the acid. So we're going to need to look at the Ka value and to remember some of the list of strong and weak acids that we looked at in the previous chapter. We're going to ask the same question about the base. What does the base look like at equilibrium? Again, does it dissociate completely like all strong bases do? Or 
does it dissociate only partially like all weak bases and we're going to need the kb to analyze that question and then the last part is when we have our acid and our base do they react with each other that's very important because if they end up reacting with each other in the solution we need to know what products are made by that acid base reaction because the product might be a buffer the product might also not be a buffer so it's critical that we know what reaction happens what products are made and are the product doing the function of a buffer or not so we're going to start our discussion and keeping in mind those three points i just mentioned with the strong acid and strong base combination so for example let's pick our stereotypical strong acid which is hcl and stereotypical strong base which is naoa the first question we ask is these two questions right here about the acid and the base which is what did they look like at equilibrium if i just take hcl and i place it in water what is it going to look like well i know hcl is a strong acid so when i place it in water it's going to dissociate completely so at equilibrium all i have are the protons and the chloride ion this is a large k react the same thing can be said about the nao8 because it's a strong base it's a soluble hydroxide salt when i put it in water at equilibrium what i will see is na plus and oh minus so essentially what i actually have in my solution in my flask or my beaker is not hcl or naoh but what i have is h plus cl minus Na plus and OH. And then the next thing I need to ask myself is if I have those four ions that I just highlighted in yellow, which of these will actually react with each other? Now, when I say which of these will react, you should think about which of these will react with a large K value. Because if they react with each other, but the K is really small, that means that the equilibrium doesn't really go far. So therefore, we don't have to worry about that. So what we're caring about here is reactions that happen to an appreciable extent which means reactions with large k value if you try to combine any of those four things right so you can have h plus and cl minus h plus with oh minus na plus with cl minus and na plus with oh minus what you have to ask yourself for each of those reactions is what is the k value of these things again keeping in mind some of the information you already know from acid base equilibrium and some other ideas that you learned in chem 11. the first reaction right here has a small k how do I know? Because that's having those ions combining to form HCl. We already said that HCl is a large K reaction when it dissociates, so therefore reforming of the HCl is not a favorable process, right? So this is not going to be a reaction we have to worry about. What about H plus and OH minus? Well, H plus OH minus forms water. We know the reverse reaction is the auto-ionization of water. H2O going to H plus and OH minus. The reverse reaction has a K equals to KW, which is a really tiny number, 10 to the minus 14. So this reaction where the two ions form water has a K equals to one over KW, which is 10 to the 14. So this in fact is an important reaction that we need to worry about because it has a large K, it completely forms the product. So we're gonna need to keep this reaction in mind. The next reaction is a reaction between Na plus and Cl minus to form NaCl. Well, what we have to think about is what is NaCl? NaCl is a soluble salt. This goes back to your knowledge of solubility from Chem 11. A soluble salt, by definition, is a salt that dissociates completely in water. It forms its ions. So in other words, the reaction of the Na plus and Cl minus to form NaCl must have a really tiny K because the reaction is not product favored in that case, but it's reactant favored. So you are going to see just the ions floating around. So again, not something we need to worry about for the purpose of seeing what reaction happens because again, if a reaction happens with a really tiny K, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't happen at all, right? Because not a lot of products is made. The last reaction is Na plus and OH minus to form NaOH. This is actually just the reverse of that dissociation reaction of NaOH. And again, we know that NaOH is a strong base. It's a soluble hydroxide salt. It's gonna completely dissociate. So Again, another reaction that we don't have to worry about. So of all the four potential combinations of the cation and anion, the only one that we have to worry about is the water formation reaction. This is a large K, the reaction goes to completion. Now, so if the reaction happened, okay, so again, think about what we did. We put in HCl and we put in NaOH. The HCl and the NaOH 
both dissociate into its ion. Two of those ions, the H plus and the OH minus, react with each other to form water. So let's think about what we have in our flask at the end of all that process, which is at equilibrium, right? We're going to have some Na plus, we're going to have some Cl minus. Both of these are going to stay on their own, but they're not going to combine with each other because there's not a reason for them to do that. And then lastly, we're going to have some water. The H plus and the OH minus are going to be there, but the concentration of those species are really Really, really small. So in fact, what we're going to have in the end is just a solution of Na plus Cl minus and water, which has a pH of 7. There's not an acid or a base in this solution that can act as a buffer. So as a result, this particular combination will not work as a buffer because the strong acid and strong base ends up just neutralizing each other. They react with each other to form water. We don't really have an actual acid or an actual base that would be able to neutralize anything that we're gonna add, okay? And again, what you wanna think about is the quantity, right? Do we have H plus in this solution? Yes, we do, but the concentration of that H plus is 10 to the minus seven molar. Do we have OH minus in there? Yes, we do. It's 10 to the minus seven molar as well. So those numbers are really small. They're not gonna do anything in terms of neutralizing any added acid or base. So practically what we have there is just a beaker full of water.